This ingredient sounds natural, however, it is anything but natural. That's what just had me triggered from the beginning, like, what's good guys it's your girl Keisha Ariel and welcome back to my channel in today's video I am gonna finally complete my review on the Neutrogena anti-residue shampoo um yeah this shampoo right here right so I did a review or I started reviewing this shampoo last year around um, the middle of October and I didn't quite get into it um, but nonetheless here we are and I'm gonna finally complete my review on this shampoo right here now the reason why I decided to just you know come back out and just complete it two reasons because one I did start it last year and I didn't complete it and I did say I was gonna complete it but I didn't <laughs> and secondly because of my recent video where I did um, Jaden's you know I gave you guys an update on Jaden's um, you know the build-up and stuff and you know everybody well not everybody some people came through recommending this shampoo and it's interesting because the very first time I shared um, you know dealing with the buildup with Jaden it was a subscriber who suggested this shampoo for me to use and I went out and I purchased it and I thought okay cool let's just get rid of this buildup and stuff and then um, I used it on my hair as well um, I'll link the videos right here for you to check out on when I first started using it or that may have been my second time I've used it but after using it like the first time I used it I can't quite remember how it felt because um i don't remember I, I, I really to be honest i can't remember my experience with it but clearly it wasn't anything that really had me like what the hell is going on um but when i used it the second time when i tell you my scalp was burning like it felt crazy like i wanted to hurry up and wash my hair out so um from that moment I have not used a shampoo and as you can see well I've just been shaking it all up so you can see that there is a lot more about half left maybe so with that um, after experiencing this burning sensation I thought let me go and check out the ingredients in this particular shampoo and when I saw that it was only 11 um, ingredients I thought okay well uh, what could it be but then again when you check the ingredients it's not on here it's usually on the box but I wrote down all of them because at the time like I said I researched everything because I wanted to find out what the heck was going on and to my surprise I found that six of the 11 ingredients were toxic some of them being carcinogens which is pretty much cancer causing um, it's a cancer causing ingredient so for anybody who is not aware or who is using it and you know clearly not aware of what's going on in it just take a moment listen to what I have to say and if you feel like you want to continue using it then that's on you or if you feel like you don't want to use it then good on you right um, and also you can do your own research yourself like I said I went through um, the internet scoured all the information I could find on this on these ingredients and here we are so let's get into it okay so we're gonna jump right into it and I'm gonna start by talking about the good ingredients the five good ingredients in this product so we can get all the good stuff out of the way and then we'll get into the nitty-gritty of the nasties <laughs> okay so the first ingredient I um, researched was water now as we all know water is life so there is nothing really wrong with water although you know if we understand what's really going on with our um, water system they do put certain things in there which probably is not good for us but um, I am hoping that they use good quality water in this particular product if not then guys you know we all in for a really bad treat <laughs> But water generally, as we know, is life. So, you know, we can't really live without water. We consume water every single day. We use water every single day. Um, so I would not really have nothing negative to say about water unless they were put in some nasty, dirty, messed up water in this product. The next one is fragrance. Now, 
I personally don't like um, products with fragrance in it because um, you know if it's not natural fragrance like for example they're using like some form of essential oil to you know give the 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 fragrance then I am not interested but let's just hope this fragrance is natural fragrance and yeah next we have um sodium chloride otherwise known as common salt and salt is not like too bad to be using on your hair because i mean salt is good you know when you have a cut like when i was younger when i would get a cut we would like put some salt in some water spin it around if say you had a cut on your finger or something like that and you just dip the um the cut finger <laughs> into that salt water it would definitely help to stop the bleeding etc so salt ain't bad and even when you go to the beach and you go diving and swimming in the salt water of the ocean you know whenever you have any cuts or bruises it definitely help with healing that so salt ain't too bad but too much salt on the other hand can be not so good and the next one we have on the good list is citric acid and we have here citric acid is a sharp tasting crystalline acid present in the juice of lemons and other sour fruits which we know that especially with it being the winter season and you know in my household we are using a lot of um, citric um fruits to pull the vitamin c obviously to combat any nasties which usually come around this time of year this this time of year <laughs> Um, but carrying on it is made commercially by the fermentation of sugar and used as a flavoring setting agent and emulsifying agent so that's citric acid and again let's just hope this is used positively in this particular product here and last but not least girl I hope I can pronounce this if I cannot pronounce it very well it's gonna be on the screen right here but it is coco meadow propyl propyl Cocomidopropyl betaine, otherwise C A P B, Cap B, okay? <laughs> but that is a mixture of closely related organic compounds derived from coconut oil. This is also used as a surfactant in personal care products. So those are the five seemingly good um, ingredients which are found in this particular shampoo right here so let's get into the not so good ingredients which are used in this product so to kick off the naughty list is <laughs> so to kick off the naughty list we have sodium laureth laureth sulfate and as you hear the word sulfate that's what just had me triggered from the beginning like sulfate but why you know um, otherwise s l e s this is an anionic detergent which is a negatively charged synthetic detergent and surfactant and surfactant is simply a substance which tends to reduce the surface tension of a liquid in which it is dissolved okay um but anyway back to what i'm saying so sodium laureth sulfate hopefully i'm saying that right is an anionic detergent which is a negatively charged synthetic detergent and surfactant found in many personal care products this is an inexpensive and very effective foaming agent which behave similarly to soap and as we know you know they do use sulfate um, products in certain shampoos and stuff like that and sulfates isn't necessarily good now i did a video back in my um it's found in my hair growth pharmacy playlist which i'll link right here for you to check out just to give you a little bit of information on what sulfate is and you know how it's made and it's not necessarily good to use on your hair now well i'll say it's not necessarily good to use on your hair in abundance but at the same time if something isn't good for you why even use it in small amounts you know so it being a sulfate one definitely had me triggered and i'm like okay that's not a good sign so we kicked it off with this particular ingredient not being too bad but we're gonna go right into more 
that ain't so great. So the next one on the naughty list is glycerin. Hmm, now people might think glycerin, why is glycerin bad? Now this is what I found from my research. Okay, so glycerin is another term for glycerol or glycerol, however you wanna say that. Let me just get rid of this that came up on my thing. Um, this is a viscous liquid formed by, sorry, this is a viscous liquid formed as a byproduct in soap manufacturing. Um, it is used as an emollient and laxative and for making explosives and antifreeze. So glycerin is used in the making of um, antifreeze and explosives. Um, I'm not quite sure why they would need glycerin in there. I mean, I don't know because you can say, well, that's not too bad because if you were to make another type of explosive, you may need water. So does that make water a bad thing? No, but hey it's so moving on to the next ingredient on the naughty list is peg 40 hydrogenated castor oil now when people hear castor oil they're thinking ah oh, good old castor oil nothing's wrong with it why would this be on the naughty list let's get into it so it says here that peg 40 hydrogen hydrogenated castor oil is the polyethylene glycol is the polyethylene glycol derivatives of hydrogenated castor oil and is an amber colored slightly viscous liquid that has a naturally mildly fatty odor it is used in cosmetics and beauty products as an emulsifier surfactant cleansing agent and fragrance ingredient according to research with castor oil in its name this ingredient sounds natural however it is anything but natural 